something caught my attention and I saw this little black figure just kind of real creepy. He was just kind of walking back and forth and back and forth. He never, it was this intense pain. And then I, I, I began to feel very, very cold. And I just go forward across the arm of the couch and I see someone laying there and it's, it doesn't occur to me that that's actually me laying there. I'm looking down, I'm like, who is that girl? And she has brown hair like me. Huh? I'm like, oh my gosh, that's me. Like this, did it, this actually happened. I'm, I'm seriously, I'm dead. When I start to feel this presence, I'm, I'm like, this is, this is not just a bad presence. This is evil. Like there's something evil here. I just feel this, this sense of doom. I can't even explain this, the, the doom that I felt that you had your chance, you blew it. You're going to hell. These, they're coming closer and closer and closer. And I knew that they were coming to take me to hell. I knew it. I just knew it. That where I was going was prepared for me. And it was a special place for, for me with my lukewarm Christian self. I knew it. I'm thinking, oh God, please, no, please don't let this happen. I'm begging you, don't let this happen. Hi, welcome to Touching the Afterlife. I'm so excited to have with me today, Carmen. Carmen was raised in church, but was a lukewarm Christian. And one night she had a near-death experience where she had a heart attack and she saw demons come for her body as she saw her body lying there. You don't want to miss her powerful story today. So welcome with me today, Carmen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. So would you start and share with us what happened to you? Absolutely. Um, well, I suppose I should start from the very beginning. Um, as you said, I was raised in church, um, checked all the boxes, knew all the answers, went to Sunday school, knew all the stories. Well, I want to talk about a story that happened um, when, when I was two, if I could start there. Okay, uh, so I have a twin sister and we were pretty advanced. You know, when, when you have twins, you kind of have that constant social interaction. My twin sister walks into my mom's room in the middle of the night and says, Mom, I, I'm scared. I had a bad dream. And my mom, you know, typical mom, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's going to be okay. Said, oh, it's going to be okay. Jesus taught me a song and told me he'd never leave me. And when my sister sang the song for my mom, my mom was like, oh my goodness, this is not a typical two-year-old song. So she goes to our room and she starts looking in the closet under bed thinking somebody has got to be in here because the song that my daughter just said, that is not a typical you know, two-year-old song, like I said. Um, so she looked and looked and she looked at me and she said, Carmen, what did you see? And I said, well, I, I saw Jesus. He came and sat down by Brooke and taught her this song. And so that kind of has always stood out to me because we serve a savior that would take the time to comfort a two-year-old after a bad dream. And I think that's, that's incredible. Um, even when I got a little bit older, um, even after that, I had several other experiences throughout the years. Uh, but I didn't really talk to people about that and, and they weren't good experiences. Um, the first negative experience that I had, I was about, about 12 years old. Um, and I was, I was lying in, in bed and I looked out into the hallway because something caught my attention and I saw this little black figure just kind of real creepy. He was just kind of walking back and forth and back and forth. He never entered the room and it absolutely terrified me. I'd never seen anything like that in my entire life. And I mean, it's scary. It doesn't matter how old you are, especially for a 12 year old. I mean, it was terrifying. Um, and it, it just, it didn't go away. I didn't know what to do. I wasn't equipped for that. And so I, I kind of just turned over. I'm like, well, I guess it's just going to be in the hallway. And I tried to go back to sleep and I felt something touch my shoulder. And so I slowly turned and it was my little brother. And he said, I'm scared. And I kind of scooted over um, and he came and uh, sat down and I'm like, what's, what's wrong? He said, I saw something in the hallway and, and I apologized to him later, um, years later, but I, I lied to him and I said, 
well, there wasn't anything there. You don't have to be scared, you know, just trying to comfort him as a big sister. But I'm like, oh my gosh, he saw that too. Um, it wasn't too long after that, that he, I, I mean, maybe just a couple of weeks. Now, obviously his room is kind of across the hallway to where he could kind of see the same hallway that we shared. And he looked over, my twin sister and I, we were, you know, both in bed and he saw a huge angel in red doing this and praying over us. And when he told me that, I, I didn't know how to take that because I'm thinking, well, why, why would there be an angel praying over us? Because I'm thinking, well, in order to pray over us, something's got to be wrong, right? It's naive. Um, and so that is something else that kind of I've, I've always remembered. There, there's got to be something more. Um, if I'm seeing the bad, there's got to be the good. Why would an angel be praying over us? What's happening? Like, I, I just, I, I didn't know. Um, again, I just had that typical kind of check all your boxes. I walked the walk, talked the talk, but I really didn't walk the walk. I mean, I thought I was, but I, I really wasn't. I distinctly remember um, one day we were having a church garage sale and this man at the church, my church that I was raised in, saying, I, I know you're saved, but do you have a relationship? And that question offended me because I'm like, what is he talking about? I'm saved. Uh, I mean, I, I got baptized. I asked Jesus in my heart. I'm good. We're good. Why would he ask me about a personal relationship? It's, it's like I could not even comprehend this question. Um, I did not have a relationship. And even though I was saying my prayers and, you know, sometimes talking about Jesus and occasionally reading my Bible, that's about as far as it went. Um, but I honestly, honestly, in my heart thought I'm good. Um, of course, now I would call that fire insurance, which is not really, it's not really anything to be honest, because I mean, even, even demons know the Bible. They know it better than I do. I read my Bible all the time. And it's it's an incredible, incredible book. It's our it's our God book. And it took me a long time to realize that. Um, I even as an adult prayed for God to put that interest in me to where I would be interested in, in reading it. And I realized there's a lot of adventure stories and there is so much power in the word. So um, I'm thankful for a lot of the experiences that I've had. But um, I'm going to talk about where, where my belief led me. Um, so as a teenager, even after all that, and, and there's a lot of stories that, I, that um, we just don't even have time for. Um, I ended up having several supernatural um, things that happened over the years. Again, like I said, I was not equipped. I didn't know how to deal with it. Didn't know who to talk to. I, I just, I just kind of like, eh, which is may sound strange to some of you, but <laughs> I guess that's kind of my defense mechanism. Just kind of throw it in the back of my head and just keep going. So as a teenager, I was very skeptical even after all of that. Um, and I thought, well, how do I know that Jesus is the way. How do I know that Christianity is the way? So I did all kinds of research. Um, I looked into all kinds of religions, looked at different people's testimonies, and I just, I just kept coming back to the point of origin to creationism. And so that's, that's what I went with. Hear me out. <laughs> that again, that part may sound strange to some of you as well, but um, I kept thinking, how could anything or anyone create a creator? Well, you can't. It's hard for us to wrap our mind around that. But I just, I had to know that there's, I knew there was something else because I'd seen too much to not believe that there's something else. And for me, I, I, I had to have, I had to have something to, to base my faith on and creation and knowing that there's good and evil went with Christianity. So I went with that and later on, obviously I would find out that that was, that was the true way. Jesus is the true way. I know that now beyond the shadow of a doubt. 
So even though I'm talking the talk, um, I really did not make the best decisions. I mean, by the world standard, I, I was a decent person. I was nice to people. Um, just, I mean, I'm a friendly person and I didn't do a lot of bad things that, you know, some other people were doing. So, which is silly because that's kind of basing yourself on uh, what man say. But really, we need to look at what does God say? What are the commandments? What does he ask us to do? And I wasn't doing those things. The decisions that I began to make, they were leading me down some paths that I didn't want to go. And I knew it. The thing is, when you grow up in church, like you, you kind of know, well, you do know what you're supposed to do. That doesn't mean you're always going to do them. And that was, that was me. I, I knew the things to do and I, I really wasn't doing them. And, and you can't, oh, well, God will forgive me. Yes, we do have a loving and forgiving God. Yes. But there is a difference in repentance and basically when Jesus shed his blood for our sins, you can't keep going back to that sin. That is not true repentance. And that's exactly what I was doing. Like, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Did it again. Like, that's what is that? That's that's not repentance. That is that's not what we're supposed to do as a Christian. But that's that's what I was doing. I would just keep doing the things I didn't want to do. Like Paul said, just kept doing the things I didn't want to do. And so um, one night my my husband and I were were lying in bed and I just felt not like a physical pull, but a pull, if that makes sense, uh, to go to walk into the living room. And it's like the middle of the night. Uh, I have, I, I'm supposed to be asleep. I have no idea why I'm being like, you know, pulled into the living room, but I am. I just, I have to go into the living room. And even as I'm walking to the living room, my natural mind, I'm like, why am I going into the living room? What am I even doing in here? But it's like my body just kept going. Like, like something in me knew I have to go to the living room. So I go in there and there's the couch. Um, okay. So here's the back of the couch and here's the arm. Okay. So I stop at the arm of the couch and I'm like, what am I doing here? And all of a sudden I felt this intense pain in my heart. It hurt like no other pain I've ever felt. I, I don't even know if I could describe how bad it hurt. And it just, it was this gripping pain and it shot throughout my entire body. And I went from like, it was almost like, like, um, like electricity just kind of jolting through me, but it, that didn't last long. It was this intense pain. And then I, I began to feel very, very cold and I just go forward across the arm of the couch and I can't move. And that is scary because I have no control over my body at this point. And I'm just laying here across the arm of the couch. And I went from the pain to call to feeling nothing at all. Um, I just went numb. Now I still in my mind, I'm, I'm kind of like, it's hard to explain because it's like, you know, you had like I had this panicky feeling and then this almost like acceptance, like, oh, my gosh, I'm 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 having a heart attack. That's what this is. I'm I'm going to die. And. And just so you can kind of understand my thought process, I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. OK, so this is it. Let me go ahead and make my peace. Let me make sure, you know. Oh gosh, I hope my hair looks okay because I'm going to be lying in the cast, which is, that is vanity. That is silly that that is my thought, but I'm, I'm being very honest right now because, um, that's, that's where my thoughts went. Like, what am I wearing? Um, what are my kids going to do? What is my husband going to think? You know, just very, I, I think a lot of people would think some of that, maybe not the hair thing, but, um, that, that was my thought. Um, so I'm laying there kind of making acceptance. I went from this fear to acceptance. And the next thing I know, I'm not in the same position. I'm actually, I'm looking down and I can see it's, it was, so, it was so confusing. I looked down 
And I'm like, why am I looking down? Because I just told you I was on the couch, laying across the couch. But now I'm looking down. So my vantage point is different. And I see someone laying there and it's it doesn't occur to me that that's actually me laying there. I'm looking down. I'm like, who is that girl? And she has brown hair like me. Huh? Who is that? Because I'm on the couch. But then I realized, wait a minute, I can see around me what is going on. <laughs> um, and so I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's me. Like this did it. This actually happened. I'm, I'm seriously, I'm dead. It, and I, uh, there goes the panic again. Cause it's not like, Oh, it, my funeral's going to be beautiful. And my kids are going to be okay. Like, I, no, I, I'm laying there. I'm seeing my body lying there. And I realize I must be at the ceiling level because I have a 360 uh, vantage point. I can see like right now, as I, as I'm talking, I can see, you know, my peripheral vision, it was completely different. And I've heard other people talking about, you know, the spirit realm, they can see around. That's actually pretty spot on because I could see everything around me. And not only could I see everything around me, but it's like, there were things that I, I knew, like things that I wouldn't normally just know. I knew, and there was no explaining that. I knew that something felt wrong. And remember, I grew up in church. So I was a Christian as you know, we know I was a lukewarm Christian. I, I claimed to walk the walk and talk the talk, but I did not. And, I, and, and somewhere deep inside of me, I knew it. I knew it. I knew I didn't have a relationship. So I, I'm looking around like, oh my gosh, I'm laying here. Something's off. Something is wrong here. There's something wrong. I just kept thinking that over and over. Something is wrong. And I, I felt like, like, like a presence. Um, and it wasn't a good one, which is what I, of course, would have expected in my, in my mind. Um, again, like I said, somewhere deep inside me, I knew I didn't have a relationship, but it's like, I feel like in our everyday life, we just keep going, which is like, like I said, that's what I just would always do. I just kept going. I'm like, eh, I'm probably good. Not a good attitude, by the way. So when I start to feel this presence, I'm, I'm like, this is, this is not just a bad presence. This is evil. Like there's something evil here. Why would there be something evil here with me? And I come to the realization that these, the, these evil things, this, this, these are demonic. And I could at, at this point see them. So it's like a, a progress. It's, it doesn't all happen at once. Um, anyway, so there, I mean, these things are everywhere. They're everywhere. They're all in the room. You could feel it. It's, it's heavy. Their presence is so heavy. And I just feel this, this sense of doom that it was like, if I could, I can't even explain this, the, the doom that I felt that you had your chance, you blew it you're going to hell. And when that set in, I mean, that's, that's heavy. I'm going to hell when that set in. Oh my gosh. It then comes the bargaining. Like God, please. No, like, no, 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 no. I don't deserve to go there. Please don't let me go there. So while this was happening, while I'm bargaining and begging like anybody would do, because I don't want to go to hell. Nobody does. Nobody. It, it's like these, they're coming closer and closer and closer. And I knew that they were coming to take me to hell. I knew it. I just knew it. And I hear this laughter. It's like they're mocking me. And I, and I, I knew, I don't, again, I don't know how to tell you how I knew. I just knew that where I was going was prepared for me. And it was a special place for, for me with my lukewarm Christian self. I knew it. And I knew that that's the, that's why they were, these things, demons were so intensely mocking me because I was a proclaimed Christian and I really wasn't, um, 
they were mocking me. And if I took all of the times I have ever had any type of ridicule, put them all together. Anytime I've ever seen anyone get ridiculed, I put them all together. It was absolutely nothing compared to the amount of mocking and ridicule that they were doing to me. I felt like I'm the butt of this joke and, and, and I didn't get the punchline because they were, it was so bad. Like I just felt like this small. Like I had no control. I'm about to go to hell. And the the demons that are here to take me are mocking me. It's again, it's not like any kind of mocking that's here on earth. It's just not. But then I heard something that I did not expect. Well, of course, I didn't expect any of that. But I heard something that I still to this day like and can't really put my finger on. There was one laughter that I heard above all of that. And, and it was the most intense evil. Sorry, it, it, it almost makes me sick just think about it. It was this intense evil laughter. Like, I've got you now. It, I'm not even going to attempt it. But so I have all these demons laughing and mocking me. And this voice that I hear above, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is, that is Satan. And he's here to take me too. Like I would never have expected him to come. Cause I'm like, well, who am I? But apparently God had something for me after this. Obviously I'm still here because when, when I heard that, like I knew I have sealed my fate. God. And you know, I think, I feel like there's so many times that God's hand has been in all of our lives. So many times he saved us and so many times that it was him that we don't even realize. And there's times in my life that my life has literally been spared and, and I squandered it. I squandered every single bit of it and look where it brought me. So I, I want to make sure that, that the audience understands it is 100% about a relationship, knowing him, serving him, following his commandments. He, I mean, what is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? This, it's not important. There is nothing here that is as important as, as well as your soul, because this is a pit stop. This is the world. It's kind of like a, a gift to us. Like there's so much beauty around us. Yeah, there's some bad too, but, but we have relationships. We have, we have Niagara Falls. We have all these beautiful things that, that God gifts us here on earth. And it's still just a pit stop when we get to heaven. And I'm saying we now <laughs> I can say that now when we get to heaven, it's, it's going to be glorious. And that is for eternity. Your soul is is there's nothing here that's worth it. And when I began to beg God in this moment, I said, God, I am begging you, please don't let them take me. Please, please. I will do whatever you want me to do. I promise I'll get it right this time. In my mind, I kept hearing, I am about to hear, depart from me. I never knew you. Those are the most terrifying words. I don't ever want to hear. I don't want anyone to hear depart from me. I never knew you. And I knew he may have known me, but I didn't know him. And he didn't know me on the level that he wanted to, that he desired to know me because I didn't take the time. I didn't know him. Our God that we serve, I didn't know him how I was supposed to. And I, as I'm pleading, like, God, please, 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 I don't want to hear that from you. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to be judged, judged in that way. God, please, I will get it right this time. If you just give me one more chance, I promise. And the next thing that I know, I'm back in my body and I'm still laying there. Can't move for just a second. And have you, have you ever seen those movies where maybe someone you know, was drowning and just took that first breath or someone woke up from a deep sleep and took that first breath. That's what it felt like. So I'm laying there and my whole body has the oxygen from my cells are, are out. I have no oxygen in my body. I mean, I was dead. So I, t 
I'm laying there and I feel, I feel that I'm back and I take, I take a breath. But when I took that breath, it hurt because again, I didn't have any oxygen in my body and it hurt so bad because that first breath that I took, I could not breathe in enough air, if that makes sense. Um, and so it took all of my strength to, to sit back up and I'm, you know, doing the whole, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, he, he did it. He gave me another chance. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And I hear it somewhere between in my heart and audibly, some of you may know what that feels like, but I heard it very well. This is your last chance. And I knew that our gracious and merciful God took me at my word and has entrusted me with another chance to get it right. And that is what I will do. <laughs> um, and since, since that, oh my goodness, when I say I got it together, I mean, I got it together. I'm not taking any chances because where I was going, that fear, that intensity, that horrible evil that I felt. I want no part of that. I don't want anybody else to have any part of that. I'm telling you right now, you don't want to go there. And I know there's other people that have actually been in, you know, on the get through the gates of hell and have talked about that. And it's, it is terrifying. I don't even think that I could have handled that. And I'm, I bet God knew that too. Um, I'm sure he did. And that's all it took for me. I didn't have to get to the gates just knowing I'm going to hell and seeing them here and they're beginning to take me. Oh, that was enough. <laughs> it's sad that it took that for me to get it together. Honestly, it is because again, I knew what to do and I didn't do it, but that's all it took. And I will be getting it right this time. And I will be telling people about God. I don't want people to have an experience like I did. I don't want it to take that for anybody because the thing is, when you have the joy of the Lord and that peace that surpasses all understanding that the, the living word, the Bible talks about, it's that's there's there's no trade off. It's incredible. Well, you know, Carmen, what I hear, too, is the love of God, the love of Jesus, because he, you know, Exodus 34, 14 says that you shall worship no other God for the Lord, whose name is jealous, is a jealous God. He wanted you to know him in an intimate way. Yes. And it's, it's funny you said that because after that experience, I kept thinking, you know, you cannot serve two masters. And that's exactly what I was doing. You cannot serve two masters. If you love the world, do you really love God? The Bible says otherwise. I was caught up in too many things of the world. And I will say since that experience, um, my life has transformed. I thank God I'm not that person anymore. Um, the Bible says, be holy because I am holy. And that is that is a constant journey every single day that, that we all have to do. Um, and when the Bible says to take captive every thought, he tells us what to do, how to keep our thoughts pure, how to keep our body pure. I mean, the Bible, I've realized as I've gotten past that, and as I'm, you know, a, a few years into this, um, I, I realized that the Bible is our protection. That's how we stay protected, how we protect, again, our mind, our body, our family, it's, it's our, it's our protection and it's, it's an amazing guidebook. It's how to take care of yourself. I mean, it's, it's there. The Bible really, if, if you don't have a desire to read the Bible, do what I did and pray that you have that desire because God placed it in me. And when, when the Holy Spirit guides you on your reading, it's, it's incredible. Um, it's a, I know I keep calling it, it it's a book, but it's the book. It's the word, but it's, there's so much adventure in there and it's, I love it. I love it. Um, but since, since this experience, um, I have had incredible privileges because I am growing again, it's a journey, but I am growing closer to God every single day. And, and I think that it's important to strive to do that, uh, because there's so much there when, 
when you have a relationship, it is a game changer. If I would have known then what I know now about a relationship with God, we wouldn't we wouldn't be on this testimony right now. Um, but God used that, and 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 I pray that He will use my testimony to help others. Um, but since then, I've had the privilege of um, a couple of dreams that um, are kind of once in a lifetime ordeals. Now I've had quite a few dreams about um, when the rapture takes place and it's always kind of the same premises, but um, I did, um, if it's okay with you, there was just a, these couple of dreams that I did want to share. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so there is, there's a brother and a sister that I have known since my gosh, I was probably 16. So we won't go into how old I am, but a long, long time, <laughs> decades. Um, I've known them for a long, long, long time. And, you know, I've, I've, hung, I've hung out over the years with them several times. But um, one night, I actually, they'll play into this dream. Okay. So I had this dream that I was driving down this very long driveway. And in my dream, I knew where I was going. I mean, I didn't know where I was going, but in my dream, I knew. Um, and I pulled up into this little parking area and I look out and there was the most beautiful field that I've ever seen with this plush grass, beautiful horses. And they're behind this gate um, and this, this, this fence. It had the most beautiful craftsmanship I've ever seen. I've never seen a fence like this. It was perfect craftsmanship. And I get out of my car and I walk over to the fence and Jesus is standing there. And he, he's, he has his arm on the gate um, or on the fence beside the gate. And he's just looking out at, at, at creation. And I walk up and I'm like, hey, what are you doing here, Jesus? And he looks at me and with this smile that, oh my goodness, it was so captivating. Um, he said, I'm waiting for my son to return to me. And when he said that to me, I got... Um, what I hear people call as a download. It was like a thousand thoughts in one second, a nanosecond. Um, I saw this brother and sister that I know. I saw that they had another brother and I saw that the brother had been kind of doing this on and off the path that had been set out for him. And at the moment he was way, way, way off the path and was making some really bad decisions. Like I, I knew that. And I was like, oh my goodness. I don't even know this person existed, but in my, my dream, again, it's this brother and sister's older brother, which I never heard of in my life. Um, anyway, so when Jesus said, I'm waiting for my son to return to me, what he meant, he revealed that to me at that, at that same moment. So even though he'd gotten off the path, his expectation was for him to come right back to that path. He expected it. And I, I feel so privileged because I felt the love that he had for this one person, even though he was making some really bad decisions, Jesus expected him to come right back my heart actually felt like it was going to explode because it was so much mm -hmm. love. I woke up, I had tears in my eyes. I'm like, this is the amount that Jesus loves him, even, even in sin. And that's how much he loves every single one of us. It was incredible. The love of Jesus. It was wonderful. I love that dream, Carmen, because again, it's, it's all about the baseline of love with the Lord. And I know you've also had visions I had a vision of a warning, which I think is really cool too. Can you talk about that? And then you've also had a heaven dream, right? Yes. Okay. I would love for you to share that. Okay. Um, so, so for the vision that I had, um, it was the second one that I'd ever had before. And again, you know, I kept thinking things like that wouldn't happen to me, but after this experience, God needed a yes from me. And so I feel, I keep saying privilege. It really is an honor and a privilege to have any kind of dreams, visions, words of knowledge, um, anything like that, because anything that can help people, um, you know, 
power of blood and in, in, in our testimony. The Bible says that it's it's so 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 important. Um, so so in my okay, so again, I think the reason that my vision started when I was laying in bed is because that's when we're still and we're quiet and we don't have the thoughts of the day running through our head. So I'm laying in bed and and I just raised up and 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 I'm just awakened that quickly and in my mind i i see something that 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 happened that terrified me because it was a family member so what i saw was every single little detail that happened so i saw my family member with another person and i didn't even know this this person which i thought that i knew all of kind of all of his you know friends and I guess not, <laughs> but, um, he was in, um, this, the side by side and he had this passenger with him that I didn't know. And I saw him go in a specific area and he went over gravel and I could see exactly where it was. And I saw when he was going over the gravel and the side by side, uh, he, it's like it lost traction and he flipped over. But when he flipped over, I, I saw the friend kind of fly out and I saw it go so, so, so bad um, that it was going to result in, in death. And and I saw uh, there was I'm, tr I'm trying not to get too too graphic, but it was it was really, really graphic. It was so, so, so bad. And. I'm thinking, oh God, please, no, please don't let this happen. I'm begging you, don't let this happen. Um, and so I, I began praying and like there was this burden on me and I did not stop praying until that burden left me. I can't tell you how long I've, I'm getting chills right now just thinking about it. I kept thinking, I, I don't want him to die. He has, he has a wife, he has kids. This can't, this can't happen, God, please please have mercy on him. Um, and so I just prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And finally that, that burdened feeling that I had it, that left me. And I finally felt at peace that I, I put this in God's hands. I trusted that he was going to take care of this situation. And I knew in my mind that he was, I knew it and I felt it. And so I eventually, you know, I went, went back to bed and the next day um, his wife called me and told me what had happened and even though I've had you know dreams and visions it still grips you when you get that confirmation this actually happened and it happened like I saw it. it it's it's it just it grips you and I began to when I got off the phone with, with his wife, I began to praise God because he did spare him. And I will tell you this, I, I told you that that was going to be fatal and God, God let the Holy spirit lead me into prayer. I don't know who else was praying, but I know that I was supposed to be praying because when he walked to a hospital, yes, you heard me right. He walked he he had severed an artery and and there was he was covered in blood when he walked uh, when he walked in and of course they immediately um began to work on him and even though he severed an artery the doctor said i cannot believe you are alive he said those words and when I, when i heard that from him later on of course i i just i just began to cry because because I'm so grateful that that I was able to, to pray and that, that that he was spared and that experience changed his life. Um, he began seeking the Lord even more and he is a man of God. And I know that his wife and kids are so grateful because they almost lost him and they know that. And I'm just, I was so honored for that opportunity. And I thank God that for that whole situation that he was spared. Wow. What a miracle. Thank you for sharing that. And then tell us about lastly, your heaven dream. 
Okay. Um, so like I said previously, um, I've had several dreams about, about the rapture and this, this dream began to feel like that. It's like, it almost feels like gravity is just turned off for the believers and and I'm looking around and we're just you know kind of coming up together and I'm looking down unfortunately there's people so in my mind I keep thinking oh where's my where's my kids where's this person where's this person and uh, of course in my mindset is I want to make sure everyone's with me because I think that's what everybody would think if you know um in that moment and and I, I kept thinking about when I would say in my dream, I would say, he's coming soon. It's almost time. He's coming soon. It's almost time. And in my dream, like people hadn't been listening to me. They just kept going through their everyday frivolous things, not I say frivolous and you'll see why. I mean, yes, there's important things throughout our day, but there's a lot of things really that aren't important. Um, so we're, we're, we're raising up and I know we're going to heaven. So my thoughts change from, I need to make sure that all my people are here. You know, let me check that my people are here to, um, as I, as I go higher and higher, it's like, my thoughts are changing as they're supposed to be, if that makes sense, because I know that there's going to be no tears in heaven. So the only thing that I knew was about to matter that I was there with the Lord and that I was going to be surrounded by believers and I was going to get to worship him and just be with him in his presence. Um, even though that would be enough in that moment, just being in his presence. Um, I'll tell you about something that uh, I never would have thought of that, that there was more to in heaven. Um, so, so as I'm getting closer and closer, it's like, um, I see myself going up and then I'm there and almost like a really fast elevator. And so I'm here and it's just, everything is so pure and white and, and holy, like shiny. Oh my gosh. It, I only got to see like this much, like, I, I know it's huge, but that's the only part I got to see. And what was so cool about that, besides being surrounded by this pure, holy light and just, I don't know, everything was just shiny and just glorious. Um, and, more beauty than I could have ever have imagined. Um, so I, there was a lot of people there and it was, there was a lot of hustle and bustle. But what, one thing that was really cool is I never thought about what would the angels be doing at that moment? I mean, the Bible talks about how when one person is saved, how there is, there is a celebration in heaven. So obviously they know us, they know who we are and they're celebrating when we're saved. So why would they not celebrate when we get to heaven? They're excited. They're excited. Like, Hey, the humans are here. The, the ones who are made in God's image, we're here. So we get there and I'm seeing all of these people just kind of going around, but it felt like, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, like moving day. Um, I could see angels kind of telling people where to go, but like, we were so excited. There was, there was this joy, this unspeakable joy. You could feel it. Like it, like we've arrived. That was the feeling like we're here. We've arrived. This is the moment. And you, the angels were probably more excited, honestly, than I was, or that the other people were, because it was like that long awaited day that they've been waiting for too. And, um, and I, I could tell that people kind of still had, you know, their personality, which is cool. Um, again, I think that we all kind of take on different components of, um, we're made in God's image. So we all have our different personalities, but I'm, I'm one of those, like, I want to get in there. I want to do all the things. I wasn't, you know, Hey, cool. I'm in heaven. Let me go check out my mansion. It's moving day. Like, uh-uh, I can go see my mansion later. I want to go see what's out there. I want to go do all the things. Um, and so as the angels were kind of telling people where things were, I see this one angel standing there and he's holding, I, it kind of looks like a scroll, but it was really long and it, 
like was like you know like a bride's train how it just goes and goes and goes that's how the scroll was um and i i saw other people like talking to him and i come up like i mean i'm like a little kid i'm like oh i'm just so excited I'm like hi i'm like what is this and he said um he like he kind of chuckled at me like oh that's so cute with her little human self she's she's excited like that's it wasn't it was the opposite of what i said like that that mocking this was the complete opposite it was this joyous like there was no mocking about it like he was really like oh this is this is so cool you know um I, I pointed to something on his scroll because when i looked at it i could tell that these were things to do I never thought about that like what else are we going to do in heaven? Like I said, it'd be enough just to glorify God and be in his presence. But like, it, I know that heaven is really huge. So what else is there to do? And he, that was what that list was. It was things to do. And I could see it. And I said, when does this start? And he said, in two minutes right there. And so I took off and I, I knew somehow that like every so often there would be things that were added to that list of things to do. And I just, that stood out to me because I'm like, okay, that is so cool that God cares enough about us that he, he's like, well, hey, you guys, you know, humans, you're going to be here with me. You're my creation. We're going to be in fellowship together for eternity. There's going to be a lot of things to do. This is going to be really, really fun. And I just thought that was so cool that he was adding things for us to do. Like there's no such thing as boredom. There's no such thing as like, there's no downtime because you, you, you do things. You just want to do things, you know? Um, and oh my gosh, it was, it was just, I keep thinking like, I wish you could have seen it. Like it was so cool. I could see why you are, your kindergartners love you. You are a <laughs> kindergarten teacher. Okay. So thank you so much again. It was such a pleasure to have you. And for a final question, I just want to ask after the experience that you had, Carmen, what advice would you give to heat up lukewarm Christians? Anything that is here, it is not that serious. Like it, the decisions that I made, it did not get me anywhere. The things that are of this world do not take any part of it. It's, it's, it may be fun for the moment, but I promise you it's fleeting. Do not get wrapped up in this world. Be holy because I am holy. I'm telling you right now, this relationship with God, with Jesus, there is more, there's more pleasure in that than anything that could be on this earth. Um, read your Bible, pray, work on a relationship, talk to him. He, the Bible says he delights in us. He desires us. Talk to him. He is our Abba. He is our father. He is our friend. He is our confident. He is, he is everything to us. I just told you about how much love that Jesus had for this one person. That's how much he loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done, we serve a forgiving God. Have a relationship, repent and mean it. Don't, don't trade yourself for anything here. I promise you, you don't want to do that. You don't want to have to learn the hard way like I did because I might not have gotten another chance. No one is promised tomorrow. Nobody, nobody's promised five minutes from now this eternity is next and it's going to be forever and ever and ever be with be with be with god the one that created you you don't want the alternative you don't want any part of that i don't want any part of that for me i don't want any part of that for you it, it, it's all about god and being with him and and having that relationship trust me that was beautiful can you pray for us? I would love to. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity. I thank you so much for this channel and for every single listener, God. And I ask right now that you you block anything uh, from the listeners' ears that are not supposed to be there. Block anything from the enemy, God, and just let 
let me be used for your glory with this testimony, Heavenly Father. I pray for every single person under the sound of my voice that you will stir their hearts, that you will move in their hearts and help them to understand God, that you are a forgiving, merciful, loving God. It doesn't matter what they've done. It does not matter that you still love them and you delight in them and you want them to have that relationship with you. Yes. You want them to have that relationship, Heavenly Father. And I ask right now that that you show every single person where they stand with you, God, because our ultimate goal is heaven in heaven that relationship god so i ask right now that that you just cover every single person that is hearing this and move in them in a mighty way and that this testimony will go out to many many people god and that it will make a difference in their life and i i just thank you so much i just i exalt you heavenly father we just pray these things in your son's holy name amen and Carmen, I just want to uh, ask here too, I just feel in my heart for those that don't have a relationship and they want to know Jesus, could you pray us a prayer that they could pray? Absolutely. You have to know that, that first of all, that you are that you are a sinner and you are in need of a savior. Doesn't matter what background you have. It doesn't matter what you've been taught. You are in need of a savior. Okay, so just repeat after me. Uh, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. And I'm in the need of a savior. And I'm in the need of a savior. I ask right now that you send your son. I ask right now that you send your son. Jesus into my heart. Jesus into my heart. And that you save me. And that you save me. And help me to know you more. Help me to know you more. And and follow you. And follow you. And I thank you so much for saving me. I thank you so much for saving me. And look forward to relationship with you in Jesus' name. I look forward to relationship with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.